Oh, sweet wonder. Oh, sweet wonder. Jesus, the Son of God. And oh, how I love Him. Oh, how I adore Him. Jesus, the Son of God. Oh, how I love Him. Oh, how I adore Him. Jesus, the Son of God. Oh, how I adore Him. Oh, how I love Him. Jesus, Son of God. Amen. We thank and praise the Lord for being in the house of God one more time this Wednesday evening. We thank the Lord for the opportunity just to look and gaze upon His Word. Praise God. His Word is precious. It's a treasure, praise the Lord. And so we thank God for his word on tonight. And we thank the Lord for those that are here and those that may be tuned in over Facebook. We just thank and praise God for God has been good to us. And so I owe God, I owe God, which is my reasonable service, amen, to talk about the awesomeness of God. And so we want to take this time out to say thank you to all of our supporters we thank you for your giving and we thank you for your time, your talent, and your treasure that you bestow upon the city of David Church here in Houston, Texas. And so we just want to say thank you. We also invite you to come out on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Our Sunday school starts and we're at 3724 Cypress Creek Parkway, Suite 115, Houston, Texas. 77068. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're located in the rear of the building. We would love for you to come and join us in our Bible study and also in our morning service. Now, this Sunday is Young Adults Day, and so our young adults are going to be going forth. Praise God. Amen. In the Word of God and in song and in praise. And so we invite you to come and be a part of the city of David. And we'll do you good. We invite you to come over to, uh, we invite you to go also over to our YouTube channel under the heading City of David Church Houston, where we believe that there's something there that would encourage you along your walk and along your way in life's journey. We need the Word of God. The Word of God is going to keep us, the Word of God is going to sustain us through this treacherous life. And we just thank the Lord that God sent his only begotten son into this world to save the world. Ah, and I thank God for him looking down on me and hearing my cry for help. And he reached down and he said I could live again. And so I thank God for that. So those of you who are tuning in tonight, praise the Lord, you have our lesson before you. We're going over to... Galatians, Galatians, the fifth chapter. Galatians, the fifth chapter, and then we're going to actually go to verse 15, and then we're going to back up after we read it. Now, the Lord had dropped this in my spirit the other day, and I thought that I would share this with you all. Let's go before the throne of grace. God, we thank you tonight. We bless your name, dear God. We lift your name up on high. We thank you for all things. You brought us through another day, O oh God, whether in the valley or on the mountain high. You brought us through another day. And God, we declare your word and declare that you are God, and beside you there is none. We thank you, God, for your touch of love and your, your kindness that you bestowed upon your people. We ask, God, tonight that you would look down on us and help us that we might empty out, that you might pour into us tonight, 
pour into us and help us tonight, God, that we might, God, flourish like the green bay tree. Oh, God, a tree setteth by the waterside. Help us tonight, God. We want to shine, oh, God, that we want to shine, God. We want your glory to shine through us. We thank you tonight once again, God. We ask that you bind every imagination that attempts, that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. We bind it right now, God. And we ask, God, that you would look down on us, help us tonight, God, and that we might get an understanding, revelation knowledge through your word. And so we acknowledge that we need you. You don't need us tonight, but help us, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. Thank God. Amen and amen. Again, Galatians, the fifth chapter, and we're going to start reading at uh, the 15th verse. And it reads, the word of the Lord says, But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. Praise God. Amen. Take heed. Mm -hmm. uh, as we look and as we see today and as we see all kind of things that are going on and, and depending on what you're watching and how you watch and what you pay attention to and you will find that the church is in a bad spot on today. Well, let, let me change that because I said it the other day and, and I had to change it. Uh, the church is in a good spot, but, but we who are following Christ, we're in a bad position today. Uh, the, the, the church uh, has all that we need in this life. But all of a sudden, the people of God, we find ourselves biting and devouring one another. We find ourselves not lifting one another up in the time of crisis. Mm. Uh, we find ourselves not, praise God, amen, praying for one another and loving one another. Now, mind you, as I thought about this, uh, I am nowhere uh, saying that uh, we have to overlook man's sins. For the Bible declares, be not partakers of other man's sins. That's the word of God. And, and so in this, but it does call for us not to bite and devour one another. Someone may make the reference that we've become like the devil. Yeah, how was that, brother preacher? Well, the Bible declares that he's going what? To and fro, up and down, in and out, seeking whom he may devour. If we're biting and devouring one another, uh, you would think that uh -huh, we're doing the same thing as the devil is doing. He's on his job, and, and the people of God are on their job, biting and devouring one another. The scripture tells us to pray for one another. Then it says, well, you know, uh, uh, she got and he got got caught they, they fell away from grace well the bible declares and he he, he gives us a way uh, that we might help them is it brethren if a man be overtaken in a fault ye which are what spiritual uh-huh restore such a one but but the problem is is that we're not trying to restore anyone uh, the scripture tells us Jesus so eloquently said it. He said, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. Mm -hmm. Over in uh, Matthew, the 23rd chapter, you, you'll find that uh, Jesus and the disciples are going through something. And, 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 and one of the disciples says, uh, Master, shall we call down fire from heaven? I understand some of us, we want to call down fire on some of these folk that, that cause us harm and, and cause us grief. We, we can call down fire upon their head. But the Bible tells us if our enemy thirsts, give him drink. If, he, if he's hungry, give him food. 
whereby we we heap coals of fire upon his head. Well, what do you mean by that, brother preacher? Uh huh. Uh, I'll kill you with niceness. My God. Yeah, that that's all the scripture is saying. We're gonna kill him with niceness. Now there is a limit, and you have to find out what the limit is. That's why it behooves us that we read the word of God. Then also, again, the Bible says, cast not your pearls before swine. So there is a limit. But you have to figure out the limit. Um, we spoke one time and we talked about connecting the dots. We have 66 books and God is speaking to us in every one. And, and what we have to do is we have to connect the dots. So many times someone will come to church and, and they'll hear a word of God on a Sunday morning and they'll ride on it for the rest of their life, but they miss all the other. Mm, let me say this. They'll eat the chicken, but they'll pass up the greens and, and the yams and the cornbread. That They'll pass up uh, the other stuff that, that goes along with it. And so here we find individuals stumbling along the way of this life, wondering why is it that I heard what the preacher said is not working for me? Well, baby, you got to find out this is not a one-shot deal. This is a process. Mm. This is a process that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. But if ye bite and devour one another... Mm -hmm. We destroy one another. Mm -hmm. We tear one another down. We're, we're not lifted up. And, and oh God, uh, let's not talk about uh, the so-called church going to the world complaining about the church. Mm -hmm. We want to take uh, the situation that we deal with and we want to take it to the world. The world doesn't have the answer, baby. We have the answer. And we have this righteousness. We have this gospel, which is the power of God unto salvation. It's the power of God. You want to know how to get the power of God? We have to get in his word. His word will help us stand. His word will help us be victorious. For we're not the head. We're not the tail, but we're the head. The Bible says we're more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. So we have to find that, that in our lives that we might not find ourselves devouring one another, chewing up one another. Mm -hmm. As I thought about this and looked at it, it said, uh, one writer said uh, um, that uh, um, it, it's like, uh, 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 what does he say? It's like, um, it's like a dog and a cat fighting. Mm. As well, I like cats and dogs fighting. But I also thought about uh, nature in itself when I thought about devouring. Alligators devour their food. Oh, yeah, you throw them a piece of meat, they, they just, they don't really chew it. They go, huh, huh, and it's gone. They just trying to get their belly full. They devour their food. They, they don't take time. You know, my mama used to get on my case because I was always in a hurry to get outside. And so I'll come inside and I'll eat and I'll be just throwing it down. She said, Dana, slow down. Slow down, boy. The outside is going to be there. And so that's how the alligator does it. I, I can't think of anything else right now, but, but, but the alligator devours his food. And, and, and that's what we do. We, we devour one another. We, we take no prisoners when uh -huh, we all are trying to get to heaven. We all are trying to get to the other side. It says, let the strong bear the what? Infirmities of the weak. So we find ourselves again biting and devouring. Just look at the world for a minute and look at the news in the past week and uh, just look at what's going on. And, and, and we got people on trial and uh, for murder. We got people on trial for misuse of money. We, we, got, uh, we got all kind of stuff going on. But then folk would tell you today that I'm a Christian and I'm living for God. 
folk bickering on their jobs and, and supposed to be Christian folk and, and they're bickering at one another and instead of coming to uh, the table of uh, reason hmm, but they're devouring one another but if ye bite and devour one another take heed that ye be not consumed wait a minute don't think for a minute that you're going to get away as you bite and as you devour don't think that you got uh, uh, you all that in a bag of chips don't think because uh, uh, your degree and your money don't think for a minute baby that uh, uh, your success is going to cause you to skate through but it says take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. We're not getting away. Uh, church at odds. We're not supposed to be at odds with one another. Oh yeah, well, was somebody fell and somebody wasn't telling the truth and they were they were lying and they were wrong and 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 and, and here's my problem. My problem is those that leave the church and they say, the church is just wrong. Well, you got all the power of God in you, baby. Stay there and pray it through. Uh, you, you can't jump from church to church and, and say that you have the power of God within you. And all of a sudden, stay there and pray the church through. Stay there and see it through to the end. I just love my church, but no, 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 no buts. Love it and pray for it that God might do what? Bring about change. If the disciples understood that they have the power to bring call down fire from heaven, what about us? Yeah, but we really don't because we're so busy biting and devouring one another. We, we don't have time. We have more time to bite and devour than we do having prayer time. Uh, I can't stay in church long and prayer, I hope it ain't too long. And uh -huh, don't ask me to pray and uh, I don't have time for Bible study and uh, didn't look at the word all week because I was engulfed with my job. And uh, But all of a sudden God got me because I don't make no time for him Praise God, but you want him to make some time for you and we still go around biting and devouring one another and we still think God is on our side. Trying to figure out how that works, Sister Jones. I, I can't seem to figure that out. I, I understand uh -huh, about math, but I, I can't seem to add this up that we're saints of God and we saved and sanctified and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, but we're still doing wrong and we're still biting and devouring one another. We're still divided and we talk about the church. Well, the church is divided. Well, why? Why would you say it's divided? Because it's not on one accord? Because Jesus really is not Lord? Uh, because you want to bring in your uh, own ideology and so if it don't work, uh, let me go. Deuces, holla at your boy. I got other things to do. But the reality of it all is that uh, we just want to bite and devour one another. It behooves us that we would uh, take hold of the gospel plow and and look to Jesus who is the what? Author and the finisher of our faith. But that's not what we do. We bite and we devour. We take advantage of the poor and the weak. Mm -hmm. Here when we look at. And I guess it turned there for a reason. Was that for? No. You know what? I was in the wrong spot, Sister Jones. Why you didn't tell me? Or was that right? Yeah, yeah, I was right, I was right, I was right. It turned over too many pages. Well, it turned over to, the, to another page, so let me go there because evidently God wants me to talk about this. When you go back a couple of pages or you go back to the third chapter, Paul has something to say to the Galatian people. He already told them that they're biting and devouring one another. You already know that a house divided against itself cannot stand. Now, mind you, uh, this go far beyond 
the church. It, it goes beyond our life. Mm -hmm. Our houses can be divided. Our relationships can be divided. Our jobs, on our jobs, we can be divided as to what's right, how we should do this and, and handle this. I think we should handle it this way. I think we should handle it this uh, If it's divided, it's, uh, Jesus spoke it, it won't stand. But here in the third chapter, he says, Oh, foolish Galatians. I like this right here. He says, Who hath bewitched you? Now, I haven't been saved all my life, so that means I know all about horror movies. Who have bewitched you? Wait, wait, wait. Who have cast a spell on you? Who has put a trance on you to cause you to do the opposite of what God has called us to do, which is love and to make disciples and to build up the kingdom of God. But somebody uh, is tearing it down and somebody thought it was their job to tear it down. Somebody just the other day, I, I, I was watching a uh, YouTube uh, video and they, and they were they were tearing down uh, a church and and I had to ask the question because the way they were talking they were not uh, it didn't seem like they were a, a, a Christian it just seems like there's somebody on the outside and that's what the devil does he sits on the outside pointing and so I asked the question I said so what do you have to do with the church what makes you so uh, an authority on the church but uh, you know I'm asking this broad question like are you even saved and and do you call this uh, 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 reporting because this is a sorry way to report because why because you see that the church or church folk not the church. The church folk are at odds with one another. And so you didn't say one time in your editorial that you were praying for the church. You want to see what the world had to say. But that ain't nothing but the devil. You, you, you never said, oh, I'm praying that we don't bite and devour one another. That's not what you said. So because you're trying to build yourself up, you don't care what the saints of God go through. But here, if he don't care what the saints go through, baby, the devil don't care what we go through. He's pointing his finger. And Paul had enough intestinal fortitude to say, who have bewitched you? Who has called you to do the opposite of what God has called us into? We're supposed to be the salt of the earth, and we just as bitter as God. We're supposed to be the light of the world. And baby, your light has gone out. Mm. Who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ have been evidently set forth, crucified among you? Jesus Christ was crucified for the church. He is. And all of a sudden, we act like the price has not been paid for our salvation. We act like we died, and, and, and I owe you something. And uh -huh. Only thing I owe you, baby, is to edify you in the word, to tell you to come out of sin, mm -hmm. that you might uh, come out and that you might be all that God is calling for you to be. Like Uncle Sam, be all that you can be in the army be, be all that you can be in the service of the Lord so it's time that we would stop biting and devouring that we would uh -huh, take time out to pray and we don't pray because we're not fasting and praying uh -huh. we, we're not able to sustain ourselves in, in, in the work of the Lord because we're not trying to strengthen ourselves when we begin to strengthen ourselves and, and pull ourselves up by the word of God, we, we will no longer have to look at a church that's at odds against itself. And then we scratch our heads and we wondering, I don't know what's going on. Baby, you're the problem. You are the problem when you're uh, biting and you're devouring your fellow brother or your sister. 
I'm not saying that things that don't go wrong in the confines uh, of uh, the kingdom. But God gives us uh, uh, ways to handle uh, kingdom business. The world has nothing to do with kingdom business. Why is the world in kingdom business? I was looking just the other day and, uh, and, and, and I was remembering um, what Sister Harrison was talking about the other day, but I was looking at this show and uh, they were talking about the division. Or, oh, matter of fact, it was recently, matter of fact, but I also seen it. But th they were talking about having chaplains uh, in the schools to console the young people. And then somebody came back and said, and I don't know who it was, but uh, let me just tell my story. Uh, talk about uh, a, a, a separation of church and state. Surely we do not want the world dictating to the church who we are and what we do. But certainly we have to realize that if we belong to God and we are part of God's kingdom, the world has no business being involved in what we do. Mm -hmm. So we have to stop biting and devouring one another. Here it says, and I'm, I'm, I'm still over in uh, Galatians 3. This is the second verse of chapter 3. It says, this only would I learn of you. Uh, he said, I heard it. I heard it through the grave. Yeah, I heard it. It says, receive ye the spirit by the works of the law mm -hmm. or by the hearing of faith? Ask the question. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the spirit are ye now made perfect by the flesh that's what we forgot that's what we've left out that we've been called out of sin unto this walk of life and we've taken it to heart we allowed it to dwell in us the spirit of God mm -hmm. We're supposed to be a people who are led by the Spirit of God. To them who are led by the Spirit of God, they are what? The sons of God. Well, brother preacher, who are you? Well, uh, I, I, I realize that uh, I have the Spirit of God within me. And so I'm watching and I, I, I'm making sure that I don't fall prey to the enemy. You, you better not fall prey to the devil you you better keep your eyes open because if not you'll be bewitched they'll throw you a curveball and you'll go oh yeah that's right and, and, and as far as the south is uh, from the north and all of a sudden you say well how did I get in doing this stuff it's because you thought it was cool to bite and to devour your brother and your sister. Here, going back over to the fifth verse of my time, it's kind of winding up, going back over to Galatians 5, and the 16th verse says, here's the flip side of us biting and devouring one another. What is the antidote? We go to the doctor, we say, I, I got an earache, I need you to give me something, for, I've got an infection, I need you to give. Here is the antidote for, for us that we won't bite and devour one another. But it also allows us to know when we walk in the spirit and when we ain't. Hello. He says, this I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So what is it that causes us to bite and devour one another? Come on, say it with me. The flesh. It's because of your flesh you, you, you're disobedient. It's because of your flesh that you're mean and cantankerous. It's because of your flesh that you want to uh, bite and devour the saints of God. And I'm not talking about those that just want to get over. I'm talking about those that bite and devour. Those that put us down for being who we are in the church. But if we would walk in the flesh, we shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh wants to be fulfilled. Hello. 
It ha my God, thank you, Lord. It has a desire that it's looking after. That's why uh, without fasting and praying, the flesh says, huh, you, you ain't got to do that. I'm good over here. Huh, yeah, I'm good over here. Uh -huh. I just got through biting and devouring somebody, and I just got through doing some, some stuff I ain't supposed to be doing. And so I'm good. You ain't got to mess with me. Praise God. The, ooh, uh, my flesh is being satisfied. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to fulfill the lust of the flesh. He says, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these, get it, it says, and these are contrary the one to the other. It's just like uh, you, you ever tried to hold two magnets together during the same the same negative and positive they, they go like this. They keep jumping back and forth. But if you turn the positive around to the neck, they'll cling together. That's how it is with the spirit and the flesh. One wars against the other. The Bible declares that our flesh is enmity against God. It, it doesn't like God and doesn't want to do the things of God. That's why when it tells you don't fast, you say okay. Mm-hmm. When it when when God says I want you to fast and your flesh says you know I can't take that today. And let me go a little bit further. I, I can't take it today, and I I can't take it next week, and I can't take it the week after that, and I can't take it next month. And uh huh. Somebody said to me one time, I tried it and I can't do it. So you gave up? <laughs> just like that? <laughs> you just, that's it? <laughs> It's a process, and so you have to be willing to go through the process, but uh, the flesh and the spirit, they're at odds against one another. Uh, they're fighting against one another. Which one's going to win? Ah, uh, the one that you give leeway to. Mm -hmm. One to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Wow. He, here he, he's letting us know that there is, now, now remember that uh, when we get saved, the old man ain't dead. He just sleep. Because if we go long enough and we don't feed the spirit that's within us, that spirit, that's why you have backsliders. And when they backslide, the spirit leaves. Oh, once saved, always saved, and you down at the women's club and the men's club and you down at the club club and you doing all kind of damnable things and, and and God is in you but you know he he just waiting for you to you know he and you talking saying come on let's go back come on come on let's go back don't work that way there's a fight going on and and if we allow uh -huh, the enemy to win then what happens is Jesus said well I, I'll be I'll, I'll, I'm going to go do what I have to do because I have some other folk I need to save. So that you cannot do the things ye would. You can't do the things that your flesh wants to do. And still walk uprightly before God. The Bible says lifting up holy hands. Woo! My God before the Lord. Uh-huh. Then it says. But if ye be led of the spirit. Ye are not under the law. Mm-hmm. The law is the flesh. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murder, and drunkenness. What? I thought that was covered under uh, revelings and such alike. Of the which I tell you uh, before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Hmm. So how is that so, Sister Jones? You mean with all this stuff and it's covered underneath the blood and I don't have to give up my chick on the side and, and I'm still going to go to heaven anyway? I'm trying to figure out the scripture that says God understand. I, I still haven't, nobody haven't found that for me, but, uh, you know, 
God understands. That's, that's what they say, but uh, I'm still waiting. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, mm -hmm, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. But he says, the fruit of the Spirit. When we have the Spirit of Christ in our life, we have these characteristics that we don't need a law. Why? The Bible declares that we become a law unto ourselves. Why is that? Because we're just, we have the characteristics of Christ. When you have the fruit of the Spirit, I don't need nobody to tell me that uh, that $20 over there don't belong to me. I don't need nobody to tell me that. I don't need nobody to tell me that when I go into the grocery store and my baby picks up a candy bar and eats it, I have to pay for it. Woohoo! But that was they wrong. But baby, you, aren't you in charge of them? So we're, we don't need a law because we become a law to ourselves. We, we understand how to do right and what is right. Mm -hmm. The Bible declares that to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth not to him, it is it's sin, baby. Mm -hmm. And all right, unrighteousness is what? Sin. And they that are crisis, here it is, have crucified, crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory provoking one another envying one another we can't be happy for one another we envying but we we start to devour bite and devour one another mm -hmm. uh, the incident they had over at um what's what's uh man what's that church over there joel osteen's church um we need to pray for them. Mm -hmm. Maybe no one got hurt, but psychologically, when somebody goes into that building, the first thing going to come to their mind is pop, 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 pop. And so God got to go in and, and touch their minds. And he's got to go in. Matter of fact, the preacher got to go out and he's got to assure them through the word of God uh, that our lives line up with God's word. And so we have to pray for them. We have to pray for those that are in war right now. We have to pray for them. Innocent lives are being lost. I believe there were several uh, young ladies who were missing this week. I got an amber alert. Uh, uh, there's so much going on that we have to pray. Not only that God would touch and save lives, but that God would help us inside the house that we won't bite and devour one another. Because, baby, right now, all you got to do is go on YouTube, and right now, we're at odds. And the world, and the devil, and the world is just laughing. We're at odds with one another. Nobody wants to pray. Nobody wants to seek peace. And Jesus said, peace, I leave with you. Wait a minute. Not as the world giveth peace. Isn't that something? That he guarantees us peace. And all we have to look out and about, the saints of God, are biting and devouring one another. And that's not a peaceful situation. Hello. It's not a peaceful situation for them. And it's not a peaceful situation for me, for you. Although we still have to live the life that was dealt onto us, individuals are going to point the finger. But we still have to be that light of God. We still have to be the salt of the earth a church at odds church at odds we have to realize that now is the time even the more that we have to walk in the spirit that we will fulfill the lust of the flesh we have to love one another mm -hmm. uh, I've been hearing about wives uh, uh, having their husbands killed or attempting and it, it's just and vice versa it's just a mess but we're we said we love God oh yeah I love God no you don't love God because he requires for us to love one another 
So you can't tell me you love me and you're abusing me. You, you, you can't tell me that you love me and you're hurting me. Yeah. And now we have this mental health thing. Uh, you can hurt me physic uh, mentally, not just physically. Mentally, you destroy me. And then you say, well, what have I done? You, you're destroying me. You, you, you're killing me softly. Mm -hmm. A church at odds. We thank God for the word on tonight, and we pray that what we've said will be a blessing unto you. We just thank God for what he's doing. And saints of God, I thank the Lord for the word. I thank God for the unction of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. I think I was walking on my way to work and just talking to myself in the word. And he says, we can't bite and devour one another. We just can't. We have to live a life unto God. And we're supposed to be the ambassadors the representatives of heaven. So again, this is Pastor Jones at the City of David Church here in Houston, Texas. We pray that we said something to you tonight that will cause you to love, that will cause you to embrace, that will cause you to see God in a whole different light, a light of love, a light of mercy. And not only that, a life of new beginnings. So our prayer from the city of David tonight is that God's best would ever be yours and we will see you Sunday morning at the city for Sunday school starting at 9 a.m. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful night and be blessed.